That thing is an abomination. But it's the best thing I've ever made. So I saw this post online about how nobody's making gargoyles for buildings anymore and I took that personally. So I decided to make one based on my two cats to go on my chimney. Let's meet our muses. First up is Heisenberg, but we just call him Big Cat. He's our smart, sleepy, and sneezy parking lot rescue who loves his pops. Then there's the latest addition to the family, Dottie. She is insanely cute, but let's just say the inner machinations of her mind are an enigma. Although Dottie is a big fan of Big Cat, at best he tolerates her. So I guess this is a representation of being stuck to an airhead for the rest of your life. To create this tortured beast, I'm using stoneware clay like shown here, and this is the process. First, I create a wooden armature to scale and cover it with cardboard and saran wrap. Cat. I start layering on and shaping the clay, doubting my skills as this monstrosity starts to take shape. But then I remember something. Good things take a little time. But there is a slight problem. The armature, it's still under there, and it's got to come out. It ain't pretty, but there's only one way to do it. Now that the entire piece has been dismembered, it's time to start hollowing it out and piecing it back together. This is a slow and delicate, but somewhat relaxing process. Hollowing dramatically reduces the overall weight of the piece, as well as gets the sculptural walls down to a thin, even consistency to help minimize the risk of moisture explosions when I fire it in the kiln later. When piecing it back together, I have to put more clay in the seams and clean it up carefully, so that in the end, you can't even tell that the piece was ever cut apart in the first place. These are the wings that I created separately, and they will have to be put on post-firing, which will require a little engineering first. I've marked their location on the back, and then I cut out that entire area. I've created a sort of flange system with deep slots in the back, where the ends of the wings here will essentially fit down inside of that like a key. It will be reinforced with adhesive and a metal rod. Now I'll just reattach that piece to the back, and clean up the seams, and then give this piece a couple of weeks of strategic drying so that I can finally get it fired. This thing's starting to get pretty dry, which means I've got to get it from here to here. It's only like 40 feet, but it feels like a mile when you're dealing with something fragile. This is the most terrifying part of the process. I really have to hype myself up to do this. With the sculpture in its most delicate and vulnerable state, I could trip over my own feet, I could sneeze violently, you name it. Wheeling it to the kiln, the vibrations are like convulsions of fear, each bump practically an earthquake. Even if I've made it this far, disaster is still lurking. The kiln must still be loaded. Bricks and shelves are set carefully into place. A thin layer of sand is put down to help me slide the piece into the kiln. Although completely hollow, this piece is still around 50 pounds, so I have to be very mindful of how I lower it. Now, I'll just gently slide the piece in on the sand, careful not to topple over the shelves, and success. Loading the wings is a breeze in comparison, so all I can do now is plead favor with the kiln gods that this thing doesn't explode in the fire. See you on the other side.
Well, it's the moment of truth. Pretty cool. This journey is just beginning. It's time to get some color on this bad boy and girl. What I'm using is a custom mixture of underglaze. It's essentially a paint that gets fired on and fused to the piece. Can't forget to slap them wangs with that sauce too. Once fully coated, the piece gets put back in the kiln and fired once again. Underglaze usually fires to a slightly different color, but now it's time to add in some contrast. What I'm doing is adding a layer of black underglaze to the entire piece, making sure to carefully get it into all the nooks and crannies. Then, I take a damp sponge and start wiping it off of all the high points so that the black underglaze stays inside of all the different textures. It's a Groundhog Day process as it's fired once again. Now this would be the final color, but my wife thought it was a little bit too much on the red side and honestly, she knows what's best for my art. So I cooled it down with this mystery purple and I'm over it. So what we get here is just what we get. This is like the fourth moment of truth. Well, I think the color looks good and I have my wife to thank for that. Well, let's get this thing out of here. What's a few awkward stares at a red light when you know you're about to have the craziest piece of art in town? It's finally time to get this thing fit for the roof, but not before first getting the sniff of approval from the muses. To start, I mix up epoxy clay to put on the underside of the sculpture. This will give the piece some lift off of its base and hopefully help prevent rain absorption through the bottom. Then, I level it out on the custom chimney cap base made with the help of my father-in-law since table saws freak me out. And then I'll repeat the leveling process with some silicone. This is the mechanism for bolting the piece down to its base. It fits on the inside of the sculpture and pulls down on the built-in flanges like so. To align the bolts properly, I hot glue the mechanism in place and mark their location on a plexiglass template and then drill holes accordingly on the base. Here's a quick look into how that mechanism works. Now, let's get this base secured to the chimney. I use a masonry drill bit to install concrete anchors and put down a generous layer of tar. Now, I doubt I'm doing this right, so I'm just hoping that this thing stays secure and also prevents leaks. I guess only time will tell, but I smooth out the tar with a glove to maybe help my cause. In the meantime, I'll work on getting this thing waterproof. To do that, I'm using none other than the famous Jack Sweet Tea. Actually, it's just water sealer that I put in a Jack's cup. Now before I can get this thing on the chimney, I have to get the mounting mechanism installed. I hot glue it in place to avoid any misalignment, and then slip the top panel of the base over the bolts and tighten it down. Now you're probably wondering how I got this thing on the roof and that's a very valid question. But the bottom line is, I've got to leave some parts of this process a mystery. This is it, the final stretch of installation. Now the top panel of the base simply screws into place and has a waterproof seal at the seam. I'll also put silicone over each screw in the top. To attach the wings, I'm using epoxy clay and support rods. The rods were installed off camera because of the precision required and the stress that it caused. Since epoxy clay takes hours to cure, I'm using a fast setting epoxy to put inside the holes of the wings that the support rods slip into. 
Our original plan was to just hold the wings in place while the fast setting epoxy cured, but I realized that when I let go of them, the wings still wanted to move. I had to think fast, so I made a makeshift prop out of my makeshift camera mount for an old decrepit tripod. You know, artist things. And then I repeated the process with the other wing. In 24 hours, the supports come down, and I can finally behold the completed gargoyle. Finally seeing this thing looming above the neighborhood is a surreal experience, because honestly, I wasn't even sure if I could pull this off. Not only did I challenge myself with the engineering required to piece this together and to mount it on the chimney, but I also pushed the limits with the textures and small details, knowing that in the end, they might not even be very noticeable from the ground. That being said, I'm glad to know that I didn't sacrifice any quality for this sculpture. This is absolutely one of the craziest things I've ever made, but I love it. I want to know what you think about it also. Better yet, if you've enjoyed this process, I'd like to invite you back next time while I make strange things. <laughs>